here's the thing. It's okay to fall off the edge of your own resourcefulness because yes. what that tells us is that you're growing. Yeah. And if you were cool, easy, smooth sailing all the time, you're not growing, you're not playing hard enough, you're not trying. Yeah. If you are falling off the edge and you find yourself there, celebrate the fact that you played hard enough to get there to begin with. Because mm. most people sit in their own mediocre life, playing within their own comfort zone and wonder why their life sucks. And at least yeah. if you're having a go and you're finding yourself on the other side of resourceful, well, celebrate, sister. Have a glass of wine and let it all out. <laughs> Welcome to Two Women, Wine and a Dollop of Truth, the hilarious and insightful podcast that gets real with you about love, health, life, and celebrates what it really means to be a woman in today's society. Your hosts, Emily Chadbourne, relationship expert and creator of the Forever Love Formula, and Kelly Bowen, world champion athlete and creator of the Exceptional Living Model. Have a glass of wine or two and share what's really working. Hey guys, and welcome to Women, Wine, and Adult But Truth. I believe this is episode number nine. I am your co-host, Kelly Bowen, and I'm here with my other beautiful co-host. Hello, my name is Emily Chadbourne, and I am the founder of that crazy thing called love. And I actually just realized, I've just put my um, screen on full mode. So anyone that's watching this on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, I'm really sorry about the way that I look. <laughs> Basically, I can't. I had to run to Coles to try and buy some fruit to nourish my body. And look, Kel, as much as I would really, really love to spend every day flouncing around an organic farm oh, shop, it's just not practical sometimes I buy my fruit from Coles, and that's okay. And today was one of those days. Anyway, as I was walking back, I kind of got caught in the rain. And um, so this is my drenched and then dried look. I think you still look beautiful. Thanks. Gorgeous. And and the good news is we're split screen, so we've got half half. Oh good. So yeah. not <laughs> covering up the whole screen tonight. Yeah, no, no, all good. So um, guys, today we actually wanted to talk to you about how to manage overwhelm. The last the last little mini episode we did of this was on Facebook Live and we got a really good response to it and we thought we'd take the opportunity to expand on it a little bit more. Um, because it is a really common place to get yourself into if you don't have the simple strategies to deal with it. So one, we wanted to have expand on the conversation a little bit more and leave you with some more awesome life hacks so that you can, one, if you find yourself in this place, know exactly what to do and how to support yourself to get out of it. And secondly, what needs to happen in order for you not to get there in the first place. Yeah. So so with 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 that in mind, how's your week been, Em? I've, I've made, you've made a bit of a tumble. That's tumbler. a loaded <laughs> question, listeners. Um... <laughs> So I had, I did the, a classic, classic chat ball manoeuvre la, last week, yeah, of uh, looking at my diary and seeing seven days and I put stuff in every single second of all seven of those days with quite a massive workload. Go the um, overachiever. Yeah, absolutely. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> That's kind of how my, my mantra for last week. And um, so by the time I got to Monday, I was... Uh, What's the opposite of charged? Flat. Empty, mm. I think, is potentially the word. And, um, yeah, I have one of those floods of overwhelm that mean that you know everything is still going to be okay. So it's not, the, it's not an anxious overwhelm. And because I have I've experienced that as well. Don't worry about it. All the, I've got all the overwhelms covered, just <laughs> so everyone knows. But uh, this isn't in... That's not the particular type of overwhelm I'm talking about. It's not that sort of anxiety. And it's not that, oh, my God, something is threatening or, you know, my heart is being raised and my adrenaline is pumping through my body overwhelm. Mm. It was the, the world feels really heavy and I know I'm going to be okay. And positive psychology tells me that everything is going to be okay. <laughs> and if I just reframe a couple of things... Um, and look for the gift in every situation and apply a shit ton of gratitude, I know it will be okay. Yeah. But I just want to stop for a minute and not be fucking okay. Um, and it was one of those sorts of, it was a little mini pity party for one, if I'm going to be, you know, when you're like, <laughs> it's just not fair that my designer heels are inappropriate for this weather. Mm. But it was one of those, it was, I have a, I, I work very hard, but I really do have a lovely life and I have so many things to be grateful for. 
But on Monday, I had just emptied myself and given myself to everyone but me. And as a result of that, I needed to release a huge amount of energy. And the best way to do that for me in this particular context was to burst into tears and cry like a baby. I am talking, you know, when you actually, you're like, oh, something hurts in my eye. And you realize that not only are you crying, but you've also managed to wipe snot so far (laughs) over your face that it has wedged in your fringe and is stuck in your eye. Um, That was brilliant at my most attractive on Monday. And so, obviously, Kelly and I being great friends, listeners, Kelly was one of the first people I called. (laughs) Kelly, is everything okay? Um, And, of course, I knew everything was going to be okay, and I knew I wasn't going to stay in this feeling of overwhelm. Although, when I was getting rained on today, on the way back from Coles, I could feel that sort of slight tug at my heartstring of you're such a victim Emily it's raining on you and I had, I had to reframe that and I was like shut up Emily it's just rain it's fine um but yeah I think when you and I sort of started talking about it we realized how important it is to let other people know especially women who have potentially you know have got a huge amount of stuff on their plate and you know sometimes it is a juggling act it's okay to sometimes release the emotion that we don't always necessarily day in, day out manage as well as we possibly could. And I consider that I, I manage quite well mm. um, and I'm a positive thinker and I do practice gratitude. I know I kind of scoffed at that a little bit earlier, but it's integral into, is that the right word, integral? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and it's integral in my life and I wouldn't be able to do what I can do and take on some of the challenges that I take on without applying sort of gratitude and positive psychology and a lot of reframing, Um, you know, what's the lesson in this? How can I improve on this? This is not a failure. It's a, it's, it's just feedback. What do I need to do to improve Mm. it? But sometimes life's just a little bit shit and it's okay to sit in that. And yeah, (laughs) I couldn't agree with you more. I went through a period. um, This would probably be about, three months ago and I did like for a whole month I literally felt like my sky was falling I was having a little pity party for myself yeah <laughs> I always every other day and I'm like what the fuck's wrong with me I'm like dude you are a mindset coach get your shit together <laughs> sort this fucking shit out like you can't, it, but it's just funny like when I look back and I think here's the thing with it with overwhelm being <sighs> And I'm sure there's like a lot of women out there that can relate to this as well, particularly if you're a mum and you're managing a job and kids and my God, but what happens, you don't realize that you're doing this and you're taking on little bit and little bit and little bit and the time that you're actually having for yourself that's meant to be for you, for you to decompress and for you to chill out, you're starting to put stuff in there. Like I know where I was at, I've got some, I have two essentially kind of like two businesses one I subcontracted and obviously I've got exceptional living and the subcontracting I do there was some stuff going on within the business that was actually starting to eat into my own personal time and at the beginning it wasn't a big deal I was totally happy to take that into my personal time and then shuffle exceptional living around it and and then before I knew it, I turned into this cranky, snooty asshole that was just kind of... I remember. Ma- yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. But no, but this is, I actually remember having a coaching session with you about this. And I, because I came to you and the, the message out of it that you gave me was self first. You can't take care of anything or anyone else until you put your foot down and go, you have to come first. If you can't take care of you then, you know, who else is going to? And it's so funny because it was my own message stuffed straight back down my throat. Yeah. <laughs> but, I think how we learn our yeah, own lessons. I know, right? Yeah. It's funny. The thing that you the thing that you teach is usually the thing that you need to learn the most. But, but in that, sometimes we get so caught in our own drama and we get so caught in our own bullshit, we can't see the forest from the trees. And it's okay that this stuff happens. It's part of growth and it's what I like to call the dark side of growth. And we were having a bit of a, a giggle about this earlier, I am about how it's all good and great to have these big goals and take massive action and all the rest of it. But have you ever stopped for a moment to think, you know, what would, like, what's the negative impact of this? Or 
who do I need to become and what are the growing pains going to be in that? It's the stuff that people don't talk about. You know, yeah. this, is, this, is the, this isn't the sexy side of growth. The sexy yeah. side of growth is I started here two years ago and now you see me here and I'm like, dun, dun, dun. like yeah. I'm all awesome. But you've got no fucking idea what it took to get there. And there was blood, sweat, tears and pain and that's okay. <laughs> and in those moments in term, when you're taking on more and you're growing, there are going to be moments of overwhelm because if you knew what you needed to know to have that goal, you'd already be there. Yeah, absolutely. However, you, you don't and you're in the process of learning. You know, a person doesn't become a millionaire overnight unless they win tax lotto and then I feel sorry for them because mostly they lose it all <laughs> But <laughs> because they don't know how to manage it. They don't have the thinking of a millionaire whereas, you know, somebody who's actually done the hard yards, they've been in the trenches, they've done the do, you know, they've gone through the pain. They've learned how to think like that person. They've had the skinned knees and the, you know, the, the cut eyebrow and stitched it back together and got up and they've had the broken heart and they've had to learn the resilience to get their get to where they want to go so and I think it's really important that we talk about this and we make it okay because I know well when we were when I were creating this show for you guys there's a few things about our industry that we kind of you know we wanted to pull the piss out of a bit because they all the time it's like be awesome play above the line and all this other bullshit that gets jammed down your throat just think about it differently you'll have and and it's true here's the thing I believe all that and I see that happen in my own life but sometimes the world just feels shit and yeah. and it's okay it's okay not to have your shit together yeah it's like okay. nobody has got their shit together I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt because I seem to be saying it a lot yeah. there, there's a challenge whoever can get me the viewers and listeners whoever can get me a t-shirt that says on it I do not have my shit together wins some kind of prize We'll me. wear it on our next podcast for you. I, I will wear it on a date. I yeah. swear to God. <laughs> I will wear it on a date. I will take a picture of it. I will put it all over my social media. You the know what? I will person, match that. I, yeah, the first person to post me, it's, I'm not going to tell my address yeah. out on Facebook. But well, you know, if even you, if, yeah, if you, you can see, email Kelly and get my address from Kelly and send it to me, and the first person who sends it to me, I will wear it on a date. Yeah, we're, in fact, send us two and we'll both do it. You can, you can rock up at my date. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, Em, how amazing to see you. Look at us wearing matching T-shirts. That would be brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, hilarious. I don't have my shit together. No one has their shit together all the time in every area of their life, in every context of their life. And sometimes it's okay that life feels a bit hard. Sometimes it's okay that as much as we love our children and we would do anything for them, we also want to see Hit them into the them. Wall every t every now and then. Yeah. It's okay yeah. when, you know, someone casually turns around and asks you to pick up an extra shift at work that that makes you want to cry because it's not that, it's just that on top of all the other stuff. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back and that is okay. There's a massive difference if you are doing that and not getting anything done. Mm. If you're doing it and not releasing it. Or if you're doing it and you're sitting in it for a really long time, because the more you sit in overwhelm, the more the smaller things in life feel overwhelming. Yeah, you just don't want to get out of bed. I yeah. remember I seriously went through a phase a few months ago, and there was no re like it was so unnecessary. I just didn't want to get out of bed, and I was like, "Get your fucking ass out of bed." <laughs> yeah. You're accountable to people. You don't get to do this. Like, yeah. go. But and it, here's the thing. It's okay to fall off the edge of your own resourcefulness because yes. what that tells us is that you're growing. Yeah. And if you were cool, easy, smooth sailing all the time, you're not growing, you're not playing hard enough, you're not trying. Yeah. If you are falling off the edge and you find yourself there, celebrate the fact that you played hard enough to get there to begin with. Because mm. most people sit in their own mediocre life, playing within their own comfort zone and wonder why their life sucks. And at least yeah. if you're having a go and then you're finding yourself on the other side of resourceful, well, celebrate, sister. Have a glass of wine and let it all out. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then let it all out. And, and here's again. the funny thing is that sometimes you hear people say it. So you and I have both sat in enough personal development seminars to have heard most of what anyone's got to say out there. <laughs> and I've heard people stand on stage and say, you know, I came from nothing and I, you know, my, my deepest, darkest moment you know, was when I fell off the 
bus and then I got run over and then a dog ate my arm and then I had no money. And my ex- <laughs> you know, and I, we've and heard all these, these stories. Yeah, yeah. And I rose from the ashes and we've heard all those stories, but sometimes they just, they're either romanticized and believe me, there was nothing romantic about me on Monday at <laughs> all. So they're either romanticized or they are so hyped up you know, that there's always this big explosion of drama and then my wife left me and then the sailor crashed the yacht and, you know, then the maid quit on me and it's all so hyped up. It's like the bold and the beautiful. And actually, this is what happened to me on Monday. Imagine this whole picture in black and white. There's no colour. It was raining outside. My flat's a bit minging because I just haven't organised a cleaner still. My God, I've got to do that this week. I was just like flopping around at home feeling like I couldn't do anything. There was, it was so unromantic, but it was so raw and so real. And I think it, you know, it's okay not to be graceful and not to have your shit together and not to feel like you want to pull yourself out of it as long as you do it for a really short period of time. I actually just sat on the bed and I made the conscious, I had that conversation with myself. I was like, you need to do this, Em. You need to have a pity party, you need to cry, you need to feel, you know, let go a little bit of, of needing to have it sorted and organized because you're a human and that's okay. Yep, 100%. And I guess here's the thing to understand as a woman and as a feminine energy, and please jump in and add stuff to this, (laughs) being that this is actually your forte. But here's the thing as a feminine energy, we collect a lot of energy. And we've got to get rid of this energy. Otherwise, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and then eventually we explode and we have a pity party or we get angry or or, or something. The energy has to go somewhere. Now, we communicate in one of two ways. And when we do this, it releases well, it releases oxytocin, which makes us feel good, which allows us to connect, which allows us to decompress. So as a woman, one way you like to communicate, and this is... Um, from Alison's Arm- Alison Armstrong's stuff. If you want to check her out, she's awesome. Not as awesome as in though. She's still my favorite. <laughs> but Alison, <laughs> Alison Armstrong talks about. But Alison, if you'd like to come onto our podcast, I would listen to every single oh, word. You say. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to have her. She's awesome. But so she talks about one. One of the ways women communicate is through a meta report, and the way that we meta report is that we. For a meta report would be, for example, oh, well. Today, today I went to the shops and you know you wouldn't believe who I saw at the shops. Je- Jenny, Jenny Bloggs was there and gosh, I haven't seen her in so long. She's cut her hair, it's red now instead of black and she looks so healthy and oh, then, then I went and had a chat to the clerk and blah, 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 then story, story, story. And then when I got, went back to the car park, oh, I ran into somebody else and you know, all I really wanted was to get some milk from the store and eventually get home and, and you've had this whole big adventure and all you really did was leave the house and go to the corner store, get some milk and come home. There's nothing excited about it, but there's all this extra, like... Extra this, information. Ex- Let me give you all of the information about my day. Yeah. However, when you communicate, like this is called a, a meta report and it goes back to when, as we evolved and the women used to be the gatherers and the men the hunters, as a gatherer, you would have to know what fields to cross, what time to cross them, what to avoid, you know, where the tigers were, what berries were in season whether to pick them before noon or afternoon, you had to have all these like little minute details and, you know, meta report comes from crossing the meadows to get whatever it was that you're gathering. So you could communicate it with the other women. Also, when the men went out to hunt for the women to be safe, the more they talked, the more noise they made, the less likely the tiger was going to come in on the group. So the way that you meta report it actually releases oxytocin as a connecting exercise for you. It's a decompression exercise. So it's really important that you are expressing yourself and you're communicating. And also if you're communicating with men, just tell him, hey, I'm going to go blah, blah, blah about a whole lot of stuff. You don't even need to respond to this. You just need to smile and nod every now and then and go, oh, okay, and then what? (laughs) Until this energy... Let's just put the little thing in there. As long as he is not just watching the football and pretending to listen because there's nothing more annoying than that. He has to still be present. It's just that he may not be particularly interested in Joan's new haircut. Yeah, or even better, call one of your girlfriends. Save the meta reports for your girlfriends. Yeah, really do. Yeah. It's, it's so true. Some of the healthiest relationships that I've ever seen, one of the reasons that, that the relationship is healthy is because both parties have separate, not separate friends necessarily, but especially the woman has a group of girlfriends 
that she gets a certain level of connection from, which her husband doesn't necessarily give her. And yep. that's okay. Yep. Because yeah. Because we can experience this quite, and it's actually really natural. Yeah, 100%. It's funny, I actually met a report, like I had something happen earlier today and I was like, I just had to meet a report and none of my girlfriends were available. And so <laughs> I, I called my one guy, like my, my bestest guy friend, and I was like, I'm about to chick out on you. <laughs> this is three minutes of your life, you Why are never going to get back. <laughs> yeah, this is I crazy. know who you called and I have no doubt that he was oh, a he was fantastic brilliant. stand in. You know what, shout out to you, Quinton. I love you. Yeah, you Quinton, just... thanks for standing in for either of you or Gabby. <laughs> You are amazing. I love you and you do the best stand-in chick friend when I need you. But it was, I totally pre framed you. I was like, look, I, I need to chick out and I just, none of none of the girls are available. It's three minutes of your life. You're never going to get back. with please hear me out. And it was great. And he was like, oh, that was interesting. And I'm sorry, what was the point to this story? No, it was funny. Like, I just kept laughing at myself as I was doing it because I know how it's really funny if you ever, like, once you become conscious, if you've ever done it with a guy, when you actually consciously know what you're doing, it's like, there's absolutely no point in my story. Yeah, I I'm do just... that. Me and my friends sense the stories now. We're like, if someone starts rambling, we're like, this is a shit story and you have to stop speaking it. <laughs> because, yeah, there's a lot of feminine energy hanging yeah. around. Friends, and then, so. so that's one way. So a meta report, which is, it's actually, it's, it's very important for your health as a woman that you do have these conversations. And it's, that you know, because it does release the oxytocin. Of course, most of the time you're probably going to communicate with purpose, but get to, <clears throat> there are times where you do need to get rid of this energy and it's one way of doing it. Mm. Another way of doing it is called a rant. Now, a rant. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what's wrong, Kel. Maybe I need to rant more. Said <laughs> no one about me ever. Yeah, but, the th- but, here, but here's the thing too with a rant. Usually a rant gets triggered when you get into overwhelm. So the, the point like where, where you went to, Em, you can either go into complete meltdown phase or you come out as angry yep. bitch phase, yep. which is where you come out as a rant. And a rant is you're just really angry and you've got all this energy and I'm so fucking frustrated and this happened and that. And you can't even pick the kids up from school at the right time and you left the toilet seat up again and oh my God, I and, hate you. And I love you at the same time. Yeah. One as, of this. Yeah. And, and again, this is another like way that we get rid of our energy. And when we're in these spaces, again, be really conscious of who you're choosing to communicate with in this sense, because it can either, it can either be very healthy for a relationship or it can be very damaging. Absolutely. So, and it depends on how long that rent has been building, building up. up for, you know, if it is just, oh my God, you left that toilet seat up. Actually, after that event, you can bring that back into the room and laugh about the fact that you bought the toilet seat up or something that's so trivial but you know you don't want to be screaming about huge massive life choices with your partner in a rant yes no and again that's another thing where like whoever it is that's listening to your rant again it's not about solving your problem for you it's just about holding space and like is that it is that it until you've literally got no more energy left yeah yeah and again give yourself like you said with your when you had your meltdown time limit Yes, I gave myself, like, li- I literally gave myself a time limit. Yeah. I was like, by four o'clock, this has to be done. Yep. And yeah. The, and the beauty about once you've gotten rid of this energy, then you can be a rational woman again. Oh, be- instantly. <laughs> I was like, oof, wash my face, pick some stuff up off the floor that I've thrown across the room. It was all right. Was yeah. just- <laughs> and, um, and then get back on with my day. And actually, I had a lot more clarity, I have to say. There was less fog. And a bit more like, actually, really, all I've got to do is send off these, you know, emails and then do this and then publish this. And actually, it's all completely manageable and it is all doable. Yeah. And the other thing we've got to remember, too, is that when we allow ourselves to get into these places, when we let things build up without taking any decisive action to actually stop and look at what's going on. And we will go through how to how to prevent this before getting there. But when you allowing yourself to get to this place, it takes time before you actually get to the point of complete overwhelm. However, in the process of getting to complete overwhelm, what's actually going on inside your body is that you're building more adrenaline and you're building more cortisol, and this is continually getting built up, built up, built up over time to literally, to you break. And it's either you're gonna break emotionally or you're going to break physically. And when you've got a, like cortisol pumping through your blood, if you've got, because being these are the stress hormones, the fight, flight, 
freeze hormones. We've spoken about them in um, some of our earlier episodes. But when this is going on, when you've had cortisol going through your veins for just seven minutes, you've reduced your IQ by anywhere up to 40 to 50 percent. So your ability to think and your ability to focus and your ability to manage what usually isn't a big deal all of a sudden becomes even more overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. It's why you hear people say all the time, I was just too angry to be rational. Yep. It's because that, that your body is just coping. It's be, with yeah, it's because, it's because of this stress response. Get to this stress response. Your body is interpreting this stress response as a life or death situation because your body, <laughs> the only time your body was meant to feel these levels of stress was when the saboteur tiger was about to eat you. And you were meant to get these like shots of these powerful hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, so that you could focus and literally just get, like run faster than you've ever fast, run faster than you've ever fast, <laughs> run faster. <laughs> I know what you mean, babe. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sure, the listeners are on to these ones already by now. But yeah. so that you can they, run they, faster. They forgive you. Yeah, so that you can run faster than you've ever ran, so that you're stronger than you're, you've ever been. You can jump higher than you've ever jumped. They're not meant to be there for everyday life. Mm. they're meant to be like pure focus and the only focus is life-threatening situation get out of here mm. and it's not like over time if you continually find yourself in these loops you're heading for burnout town or worse you know your body will start putting on weight and you'll not be able to get it off so it's really important that one if you get here you know Give yourself a time frame, right? What do I need to do? Do I need to have a rant about it? Do I need to call a girlfriend and say, hey, look, I just need to scream and yell about some stuff and I just need you to hear me out and keep asking me, is that, is that it until I've got nothing left so that I can connect with my heart again and be rational? Or do you need to have a meltdown? Like as M, M so vulnerably and beautifully shared that, you know, cries, wipe the snot in your hair and in your eyes. Yeah. You know? It was. It was so, um, is cathartic the right word? Yeah, cathartic. It was. It was really cathartic. And I think <clears throat> I think if I had those meltdowns every week, I'd be exceptionally worried. Mm. And if I had more if I had one and didn't feel better afterwards, I would have raised that as a as a different issue. Mm. Or it would have become a, a sort of a different issue. But I think there is a healthy way of of and again I think this is again a feminine sort of thing to do, which is just is to release. And really interestingly in this Again, it's funny how we've almost swapped topics. I know. <laughs> because I'm about to talk about the physical body. Go for it. One of the things I have has been has sort of fallen off, if you like, um, or been sort of slightly nudged out of my, car- my calendar is physical exercise. Mm. And I haven't done, I had these beautiful, romantic, gorgeous visions of myself becoming like a beautiful yoga bunny over the winter. And obviously I didn't go more than once. But... <laughs> Before, you know, before the jets of winter grasped hold of us, I was really regularly going to the gym. I was pretty built last summer. Mm, I remember. Um, you were super fit. Yeah, super, super fit. And I think <clears throat> I haven't been giving my physical body that release. But mm. also, and this ties back into my, sorry about my horrendous hair because I got rained on on the way back from Coles. The reason I went to Coles to buy fruit was because I didn't go to the farmer's market on Saturday. <laughs> and... Um, and I'd realized that today I'd eaten basically some boil-in-the-bag noodles and a chocolate walnut brownie, which was utterly delicious, but that's not... Not so nutritious. There, there are brain cells in your stomach, right? So yeah. we want to be feeding the stomach <laughs> as well. Like, we can't just be... And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very aware that there are some physical things that I haven't been doing in terms of continuous maintenance for, the, for my actual body... And that, that has a direct effect on my ability to handle various amounts of, I'm not going to say stress, but it is, you know, various projects and to think in a very clear way and to be a bit more rational about planning out my day. And because, you know, you and I did an exercise together, Kel, hmm. where we basically stopped and planned out my life a little better. And all, all of a sudden, the overwhelm, uh, well, that sort of, you know, the enormity of life depleted funnily enough um and so you know there is um your body is so important when it comes to how your logical all right well realistically how much how long is this project going to take all right let's put it in the diary here 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 and here and this is going to move here when you're not fueling your body and your brain or allowing that sort of release through exercise and natural endorphins you know all that mm. kind of stuff then 
there is naturally going to have there is going to be over time a consequence to that and I think that may have very well contributed to my little mini meltdown on Monday because I haven't been looking after my body as well as I have been and giving myself those that endorphin hit really every day yeah. I was going to the gym daily yeah and I think too like it get, but also from when you were going to the gym daily to where you are now that you have had mammoth growth and yes, in, in, in inside of growth too, like uh, I really want the listeners to understand this, inside of growth, sometimes in that growth, it gets this bit of dark side of growth that not many people talk about. Within that growth, you've got things that you thought you had nailed, but then you stretch and grow. And sometimes some of that stuff you thought you had nailed falls off the bandwagon. And you're like, hang on a minute. And you stretch and grow and then you've got to bring it back in. And then you create a foundation at this new level of where you're at before you launch onto the next level. So I think it's probably, do you reckon now would be a good time to share with him like some strategies of how we decompress this for you? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Share. So what we did um, with Em was had a look at, okay, what is it she, the, what, what's her ultimate goal? What is she ultimately wanting? And the, th- the reason why she was feeling overwhelmed was she just felt she had way too many business projects going on for what her goal was. So we went right back to basics and said, what's the ultimate goal for your business and by when? So right now she's got a goal that she wants to have by the end of the year. And we went, okay, great. So if this is the goal, then what needs to happen in order of priority to achieve that goal? And that becomes the focus. Now, before you go telling me that you need to put business projects in there, the first thing you need to put in in any project is time for you and what needs to happen to maintain you yeah and, and that had been a noticeable absence of that with yep. and actually any time that had been for me had been sort of grapple time and because I'm a very social person um, and you referred to this in your last body talk mm. which um, listen to Kelly she's on Facebook live at six o'clock every Thursday and she did a body talk oh, last geez. week which would be I don't know what the date was it's before. in the group um it's in the group yeah, so it's the most recent body talk in the group, but you're probably not going to be hearing that listening to this. How about we, when we put this episode up, we'll attach the body talk with it? Because, you know, Kelly's talking in that particular episode about how we maintain our energy, where we draw our energy from, and really she demystifies some of the stuff about what an extrovert is and what an introvert is, because I think they get muddled up quite regularly. And um, mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an extrovert by heart, by nature, and I've always known it, and I don't think it's been... A particular shock to anybody um, that I draw my energy from being around people and so when I had been trying to snatch bits of time for myself it had been about other people all right hang on a minute yep 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 I'll, I'll do that meeting okay I can see you on Monday night for two and a half hours and then you know so any time I had was still with other people but it wasn't resourceful it was running around it was giving myself to other people as opposed to hey, come over and we'll just relax and be in the same room together. It was always go, 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 activity, activity, activity. And although I do need to be around other people, I also need to chill out. Yeah, extrovert, relax. It was not, there was no, no room for that in my diary. Mm. Yep. So, f- yeah. so, so first, first project you want to do, whether this be in an area of health, whether it be in relationships or whether it be in business, first thing that you need to schedule in is when is your you time? Mm. When and when is your you time for you to do the thing that recharges you? And we will put that little body talk up underneath this, so you've got that. Yeah. Um, so when are you scheduling? And sorry, just on that, Kill. I'm really sorry. Before you say I haven't got time to do that, that, like Kelly, Kelly said this at the very beginning of this episode. If you aren't and don't and can't find time for yourself, you cannot support the people around you. No, it's the same in relationships. You have to be the most important person in your relationship. Yeah. Because you can't other and, and and if you don't give yourself time and love and energy more than anyone else, you can't love the other people around you to your full capacity. So there are no excuses. It is even if it's even I understand that people have children and that's a whole different level of busy. But even if it's I'm going to have a bath tonight, I'm going to leave the kids with my partner and I'm going to shut the bathroom door and I'm going to light some candles and I'm going to have a bath for twenty whole minutes of just me. Yep, and it's, it's the same thing that I do with um, my clients. It's it's all good and great to have all these different things that you're doing for your body, but priority number one, you've got to schedule your off time because this decompression of your nervous system is what allows you to cope. And even if you're like achieving your ideal body, if it's about weight loss, your nerves need to decompress. Otherwise, you won't burn fat. You just won't. Your, your body won't let you. 
So yeah. yeah, one self priority. Look at look at your week. Whether you run like a, your when you're looking at your goal, if there's things that need to happen on a weekly basis, or if you run on a fortnight, like there are certain things that happen within a fortnight period. Every fortnight, use a fortnight model. If it's weekly, use a weekly model. So once you've got the right, so this is my ultimate goal. First thing that needs to happen before anything else is there needs to be time for me to nourish me, nourish my my energy, and nourish my body, and nourish my mind. So we're mind, body, spirit systems. So there's got to be time for nourishing soul, like time out, decompression time, nourishing, taking care of the body, putting the right foods in, because if you don't, it will break down on you. That's not a threat. That's a promise. Yeah. And, and thirdly, you know, make time to move, move your body. Yeah. So yeah, body, body, mind and soul. So once you've got that, then you can have a look and go, okay, so if this is my goal, what's my number one priority? And in terms of with him, it was, you know, she wanted to have certain X amount of clients in her business by the end of the year. So the priority, the actual priority project for her is what's bringing clients in. And that needs to be the main focus. Mm. And she had about 10 other, pro- 10 other, no, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. As I was honest, reeling about- them off, Kelly's <laughs> eyes just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more horrified. I was like, oh, and then I'm doing this and then I'm doing this. Yeah, and those projects are still there. They're still there, but now, now there's but a. They focus. are in categories of importance, and that makes a massive, massive difference when you are going on a day to day. Like, what do I need to get done today to achieve my goals? Yeah, my- projects. Yeah, one, two, and three always get done. One being yourself. Two and three are the two projects that you're working on, and then the the fourth project is if the other two get done, then you can do a bit of bonus time on those. And that's a, and then the bonus time. Once that bonus time project, the two maintenance projects, you know, are taken care of, and the bonus one, you eventually just keep working through it till it's done, and then you can bring in another one. You know, getting distracted or bringing other things in until that one bonus project you're working on gets ticked off. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you get into meltdown phase. Otherwise, you do what I did. And we're going to have to wrap this up really soon because um, well, we're just conscious of time. But again, I think it's really important really interesting to highlight that I talk about boundaries so much with my clients. I'm all about get those boundaries in. If your boundaries aren't in, it's all very well and good just to say, oh, you know, we'll let that slide. We'll let this slide. We'll let this slide over here. I really, really like him. Or I can just ignore this bit about him. Or, you know, I'm going to constantly be the one that drives so that he always drinks. The boundaries that you start at the very beginning, they just get exponentially looser or tighter. And what I hadn't done was given, given my business or me or the people I, I hang with boundary, enough boundary. So I had been saying, yes, no, it's fine. I've got space on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Not, no, it's Sunday afternoon. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and I think, so I, yeah, for me, boundaries has been a, a massive yeah. sort of the little mindset shift of actually, I, I preach this. Yeah, I know. Isn't it funny? <laughs> we get our own messages slapped back yeah. in our face. Um, And I think a really good model to look at as well in this, if you're looking at, you know, what's my ultimate goal? What do you need to start to achieve it? What needs to get maintained? And I promise you the maintaining projects are the most important ones. And what do you need to finish to achieve it? And they're they're the three, yeah, three most powerful things you can look at. And you'll find what really needs to happen is mostly maintaining and finishing. Often not a lot of starting because it's the starting that creates the overwhelm. Yeah. We just go, ah! And yeah. th- there's nothing wrong. Like if you get a cool idea, well, again, we're talking about we're obviously business specific right now. But um, for those of you that are either um, in business or the you know you've got creative roles where you've got ideas that come up, or even you know even life stuff come up that you're like, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. It's not a. It doesn't mean that we're saying say no to it right now. What we're actually saying is put that into the you know coming on my next bonus project list so that you can just tick them off and work through them yeah in order to whatever it is that you're wanting to achieve it's not no it's just so that you're only ever managing a few things at once because i was trying to manage 15 projects a day yeah and because the thing is like i know we've mentioned this on a few different web uh not webinars we're not on a webinar we're on a podcast (laughs) there's a few different mediums we have but um the the way the brain goes it goes one piece of information two piece three piece many overwhelm so you want to keep it to like minimal chunks as possible and so that your brain's not trying to hold all these different things because you will hit overwhelm it's not again not a threat it's a promise 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And ladies, as always, please let's continue this conversation. We would love to hear if you've got some specific overwhelm strategies that you use or um, some state changes. What I mean by state changes is, you know, when you're feeling just a little bit sookie la la and a little bit sad, you know, one of my favorite things to do is crank up Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney oh, Spears. Dance, dance around with my hairbrush in my hand. It makes me, it takes me away instantly from that feeling of, to oh my god I can do anything (laughs) Um, so you know please feel free to share things like that we will continue this conversation in the hangout um, the Facebook page which is just for podcast members Uh, so it's Women Wine Dollar Per Truth Hangout so if you're not already a member head over there and request to join because Kelly and I continue these conversations on a daily basis yes where we get to know you and and look if, if you want some help with maybe sorting out some of these priorities or if you're not quite sure what you should be focusing on to get to your goal that's what we're here for hit us up talk to us about this in the Facebook group uh, every Wednesday is our Q&A day, so once you, it gives you a couple of days to listen to the episode. Wednesday's uh, Q&A, so you'll see a post come up. I would like to say it will be in the morning, but usually it happens in the afternoon. <laughs> so keep an eye out for it. And if you put your question up before we get our posty up, then by all means, you know, we are actually, we're across it. We're, we're looking for it. We want to help you out with it. We want, you know, our biggest thing is to have you get to where you want to go as quickly as possible. Thank you ever so much for listening and thank you for watching if you're hanging out with us on YouTube. Um, Please tell all of your friends. There we are. Shameless, shameless plug. We would like to reach as many awesome people as possible, um, men and women, really. Let's be honest. If you're a man, we're not going to exclude you. But this is. You let you in some secret uh, women's business? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You're more than welcome to witness my many meltdowns. So (laughs) there we are. Um, so thanks ever so much for listening and we will see you at the Women Wine Dollar Proof Truth Hangout. Hangout. And please, please, please subscribe, download because download is where we get our ratings from on iTunes and give us a rate and give us a review. We would love to hear what you think of the show. So till next time, ladies and Thank gentlemen you. Bye. now. <laughs> Bye.